I'm John Graft, and I love Chicago real estate. Between showings, I stop in my favorite places, talk with local business owners, and bring their story to you. This is my Chicago. My clients were like, can you FaceTime me? I was like, no. I don't know. Yeah, like, <laughs> I I, 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 I'm like, can so. you jump on Facebook real quick, and we'll just do it that way? And like, it became this thing, so I had to get an iPhone. But the, oh, because people want I got an to iPhone. Be, yes, that's basically the reason. But and what, what do you think? I love it. Well, so going from an so here's the thing. They have a better ecosystem. They have a smoother experience. Yeah, but it's, it's an more inferior easy. phone. And like every capacity, it's an inferior phone. Because it's more like. Oh, I, it's more like user like. It's okay. So you, iPhones made so you don't mess anything up. Uh huh. And so you know, there's a. 15 year old girl who's using it and doesn't want to figure anything out she just wants it to work or like an older or an older person yeah absolutely or anybody really like gr- right people just want the phone to work yeah. me i want the phone to be optimized and i want to be able to use it for what i do day to day and it's yes. more of like a business tool and you can this way you can you don't have to log onto the computer to like use something yes, or like or make and, edits and or... i can expand that in android much further than you can with an iphone yeah that being said this has dobe video which is the first cell phone to ever have it this mm-hmm. is the first iphone any phone so it's worked out really well is the camera better on these or Ex- uh no no but it has dobe okay so the dobe gives this crispness mm-hmm. that is hard to achieve on another cell phone yeah but Adam's phone, for instance, we've tested it. Yeah. His is like a year older, and my this one's better. But if you look at the new Androids that are coming out, like they passed this. So there's always really? that. The, my Everything biggest, is always going to get better. Y- exactly. Yeah. My biggest problem is these are only 12 megapixels on the camera, mm-hmm. and 12 mixel- megapixels isn't a lot. Like you can't zoom in on photos. You never know how grainy uh, oh, yeah. iPhone photos can look. Oh, yeah. and it's super and like annoying. videos and stuff. Yes. Like it's. Uh, yes. It makes a huge difference when it comes Next, to. You don't want more megapixels for video. Want, really. You want bigger. Oh, okay. And so the other ones, like Samsung, they've been great at, and I wouldn't even buy a Samsung, there's too much I don't like about them, but they're really good where they're just like, we're gonna make our media better than anything that's out there. That's just like what we're gonna focus on. That's what they focus yeah. on. Like we're not going to. Yes. Yeah, mic check. Oop, we're all good. Is mine? Oh, I don't even, okay. You were like, I've been hearing you this whole time. No. <laughs> Have you always had an iPhone? Uh, since like 2012, I think okay. I, because I, when I was working in banking, I had the BlackBerry and yeah. I loved that because I was just so used to that, but it was just so like the pictures and just like Graininess, using the internet, using little buttons. For yeah. Everything. And then like that little ball, like <laughs> moving that thing around. One of my first know. smartphones had the ball and I loved the ball. I was like, yeah. this is great. Like you're getting rid oh, of this. Oh, it was great for the, the, um like playing a game there was some like game that i used to play on it i was like this is so cool and it's just like like almost like a novelty like yes but it was so like if i had to google something just like googling something it was impossible it's a task. Like, yeah it was so long it took so long um so that's when i, I switched an iphone i feel like it must have been like right before i left banking um and then when you were in banking were you using the iphone again well, when I was in banking, you had two phones, so yeah. you, so I Everyone had, had the BlackBerry, and the BlackBerry, you know, they still use that BlackBerry security, like an email, a number of companies do, because yeah. it's one of the best secure servers. Oh yeah, we used to use that, so they, so they gave us, a, they would give us a BlackBerry um, for work, and like that's where all our work emails went to, and then that's what we used as, um, like the passcode when you would, you know, the... It's Protect like the, the yeah, yeah, or is that what it's called? I That's can't what it's even called remember. now. I remember I used to have the man, this is like really aging me. Um, <laughs> I used to have that little like tablet thing, or the it's like just a little like a fob, ta- yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and it would have different numbers all the time, okay. And to log into my secure, like JP Morgan secure site, I had to, um, like verify through that yeah so blackberry had that built into their um, doctors use something similar today when they're doing prescriptions so if it's a controlled substance when they want to send it in they have this button device and they have to approve it as they're doing it oh so they can monitor it it. or so that not they but like some someone i guess have have some record of it yeah yeah oh interesting so how'd you go into banking into owning or bake 
banking into baking. I guess that's yeah, the I know word to call this now, like actually. Like investment banking <laughs> to investment banking. Um, so I um, first, so throughout college, I always wanted to get into finance and like I just, that was just what I thought I wanted to do. I wanted to make money. Um, Where's your school? I went to Smith College, so okay. it, was a, it was a liberal arts school, so it was a little unusual for me to want to go into finance um, as my field, but that's what I want. I want. I wanted what I wanted. So I got into um, investment banking immediately out of college. I did M&A in New York, uh, mergers and acquisitions in New York, and then um, my husband, well, boyfriend at the time was in Chicago, so shortly after I started, I wanted to um, transfer to... Chicago and then were you doing long distance we were doing long long distance we met in college so okay. we've been together like oh so god this is really dating me like 15 years almost so you, 15 years so you were both at Smith and then well Smith is an all-women's college he was okay. at Dartmouth you went to an all-women's college yes what's that like it was it was interesting it's very pro- progressive as you might imagine but yeah. then it was also I love that it was really deep rooted in tradition because it was it seems forwards and backwards at the same time it, it, and it is it's like because uh, they started these women colleges as like basically a place where all the Ivy League colleges can go and find their future wives really yeah Smith was um, Yale's sister school so that's where all the like Yale was Yale to... ever all male yeah so it started off as all male. Yeah, all of the all of the Ivy League schools, they were all male. I had no idea. They were all male, and then so then all these women wanted so they started to the get sister it. school. But for then the they sisters. were like, yeah, well, exactly. They were like, well, we need some educated young women because we have all these educated young men. Interesting. So then, um, in a lot back, I mean, back when they were first started, a lot of these women didn't finish their programs because they got picked they, up yeah because they got like yeah, they they went on the mar- marriage market and um found, already found their husband so that's kind of the history of um women's colleges so they're old like smith is one of the first ones i don't i can't remember the date off my head but it was in, sometime in the 1800s when okay. they um started and it was shortly after um the first ivy league start uh, so quickly they realized this issue and went to solve it. They're like, yeah, we need a place to park the ladies <laughs> while the men get an education. And also would it would be nice when um, a nice place for them to find their future wives. Do you know when they went from all male to co-ed? Uh, a lot of them were different times. Um, most of them, I think, were in the 50s, 60s. Okay. Like right around, So it, they were... Recent. Rel- I mean, relatively recent. I mean, yes. It's Smith. And Mount Holyoke and Barnard are the only ones that are still all women's. Okay. That I can remember off the top of my head. I might be forgetting some. A lot of them merged. For, oh, Wellesley. Sorry. Wellesley is the other one. Um, a lot of them merged. Like, for example, um, Radcliffe was Harvard's sister school. And okay. they merged with Harvard. Um Harvard had two sister schools. Wellesley is the other one, so that one stayed. One wasn't enough, so they traded another one? Yeah, they were like, I mean, you're Harvard, so you get another one. Or or maybe Wellesley was someone else's, and they were just like, but you're still close to Harvard. When you were in high school, what was going through your head where you are like, I'm going to go to an all-girls school? I, I, knew, I knew someone, an older, like my mom's mentor, so she, at the time she was like in her 80s or 90s, and she okay. went to Wellesley, and I just always thought that she was just so poised and elegant and graceful, um, incredibly intelligent, and she just spoke wonderfully of Wellesley. Um, and then, so I started looking into all women's colleges through her, or from just from knowing her. And then the more I started um, meeting these women who were um, these women college alums, mostly from Wellesley and Smith, I was just fascinated by their stories um, and I was just really interested in that concept like what if because it's almost like a case study like what yeah. if you take sex out of the uh, sorry sex as in gender not sex as in anyways I uh, think it's both yeah well, yeah it's, it's somewhat <laughs> both um, and I thought that that I, I think that um, as women like sometimes we behave differently when a male presence yeah. is around and also I think like a lot of times we get uh, kind of pushed back because men, um, again, this is a very general statement, um, men just 
are used to speaking up and yeah. are and na- by nature they're very confident um and i think so i thought i was really interested in how um these women these women college alums were just incredibly confident incredibly um well spoken uh, and just very sure of themselves so i thought that that was just a interesting experience was it all female professors as well no okay. that was mixed that'd be and taking then, it a little too far i feel and then, then you're losing out on just whatever male talent yeah you're provide. just kind of like well this is what yeah yes. no it was it was co it was whatever professors and there were and i would say the professors were 50 50 okay um so it wasn't maybe so, even so more male. An environment where you could arguably be more comfortable because it's all female you're not trying to impress someone you don't have to put on your makeup necessarily like there's less of the pressures i would imagine of going to class and being on campus we there, there were less there were fewer social pressures um so for example we don't have we don't have sorority so we don't have to worry about rushing for a sorority and then there weren't things like um yeah there weren't it's a little different in that uh, you don't have to worry about like what you look like during yeah. class, assuming you're straight. So, um, so would you? That's a good yeah. point. Would you recommend it to young girls coming up and deciding what schools they should go to? I mean, if I if I had a daughter, which I that is not in the cards for me. I have two sons and another one on the way, so it's a it's a, it's a boy factory over here. Um, I would recommend I. I thought it was a really interesting experience. I don't, I don't think I'd re- recommend it for anyone, everyone. Um, but I do. I really enjoyed my experience there, and I just, I really love um, places rich in, tr- rich in tradition and have have like a really rich history. And I just love that um, these women colleges have that. For example, every Friday we had Friday tea, we had afternoon tea, Were and the clubs? whole. <laughs> no, but we did serve tea, and we had um, little a uh, little tea tray, like a pastries and sandwiches and such. And we would sit in, and we lived in houses instead of dorms, but our houses were our dorms. And we would sit in the living room and gather and talk about our weeks. And I always thought that that was such a just such a nice reprieve from the you know the academic chaos that we yeah. were in. I went to a military school. Oh, really? By choice. Uh Uh-huh. And it was all male. Mm -hmm. And I was only there for one year. Mm -hmm. There was, uh, basically, we were moving, and we visited the schools where we were going to Mm -hmm. move, we were supposed to move, and they were terrible. Uh Uh-huh. And the schools where I was at before were great, and I liked them, and I didn't want to switch them. Mm -hmm. And so I had two options. I had boarding school, and I had military school. Mm -hmm. And I visited both, and I liked military school more, Mm -hmm. so I decided to do that. And then we never moved, so I went back. But for one year of my life, I went to military school, and I find it responsible for a lot of the positive traits I have because it taught me how to be responsible for everything. Mm -hmm. Everything is on you. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there would would have ever been another experience in my life at such a pivotal point in my life where I would have experienced that and had that opportunity. I mean, I think it's very uh, almost like unapologetically like this is what I, like we're not trying to appease everyone yeah this is this is what we are we are what we are so if that's what you're interested in come on board well like this is versus a school that's trying to impress progressives and conservatives yes. and um people who are helicopter parents and people who are um d- you know kind of leaving parents yeah so i think i i do like i, I don't know the term themed school but it just had a school with a specific age- agenda there's it an is, agenda yeah, yeah you know it's a you know what you're getting into like you go to a military school you can expect yeah you can it's gonna be kinda, tough yeah you can kind of you kind of have an idea of what what awaits you so you brought up helicopter parents did you have tiger parents um, were your parents very involved in your upbringing in terms of pushing you into a school or making sure I things I would say my, out? my mom was always pretty academically focused. Mm-hmm. Um, she was a professor and okay. she's um, quite intelligent. So I think that was always a focus for her. Um, I would say that as a parent now to my three-year-old, I, I, and just knowing my parenting style, I think I'm definitely more of a tiger mom than my mom was. Okay. Um, but I think my mom was also a, a single working mom. So okay. she, while she perhaps had highest aspirations for me, she doesn't necessarily have 
the time mm -hmm. um, to monitor my, you know, my academics. She just had to trust that I did it. <laughs> so. Do you, have you heard the new term for parents? Oh, no. So it's a, a snowplow parent? Ah, uh, yes, I have heard of that. It's, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't conjure up uh, a positive Im image yes. in my mind. But. Just move everything out of your child's way. Yeah. Do, do you take care of it? Make the path clear. You need help opening that? I got you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, college admissions? Okay, let's see what we can figure out here. We, you, you yeah, well, we're a team. Yeah, yes. yeah, it's not that you're responsible. Yeah. 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 So you went to this college and then you went to Manhattan. Yes, I went to Manhattan, got uh, got into investment banking, then moved to Chicago. Your husband went to Chicago when you guys split paths? Uh, Are you a boyfriend or a fiance at the time? Uh, at the time, my boyfriend, he... Uh, he got he started a job in Chicago and saw himself living there long term. So then I moved to Chicago because um, again I was at J.P. Morgan. It was easy to it's easier to move within that within company, company. Mm -hmm. because it's a very large company versus he was at um, a boutique high frequency firm, which okay. is high frequency is mainly centered in Chicago. Um, so. Uh, moved to Chicago then we sh shortly after we got engaged and um, at the time we just realized that I, I mean at the time I was working 80 90 100 hours a week so I moved to Chicago but rarely saw my then fiance um, so I we sh realized that this wasn't going to be and I, I I started not enjoying the work I just didn't really what are you doing on the M&A side were you putting that many hours in? Are you are you underwriting? Are you analyzing? It, it depends on the deal, but it, in investment banking, you're essentially the financial advisor to the company, whether it's on the buy side or on the sell side. So let's just take, for example, um, we're advising on the buy side. So as the investment bank, so I'm speaking for, like, not my, um, my position in particular, but as the bank like as my team we are advising our client on the the best option to uh, like it, and it, again it depends whether they're looking for different strategic alternatives or whether they already have a company in mind that they want to purchase so let's say they have if, a company in mind okay they have a company in mind and let's say that that company oh it's very much like real estate okay so for example like uh, there's a, a company and they're like, okay, we want to sell ourselves. Like we need, we want to market ourselves. And then there are all these like potential group of buyers that, um, that are looking into this one business and they, um, so does that business, if they want to be on the selling block, are they, do they go to JP or they go to Goldman and they're like, Hey, represent us. So they, they, they'll have another represent okay. another financial advisor. So mm -hmm. for example, if I'm on J we're on JP Morgan. They probably maybe they have Morgan Stanley, or maybe okay. they have um, uh, Goldman Sachs or something. So, on the sell side, they have someone representing them. So they have a, it's almost like a real estate agent. Okay. So, so they have an broker agent. Broker and broker. Yeah, broker and broker. We're broker. Basically, we're broker. So um, they have someone who's like making them look nice, like taking their photo. <laughs> photos but basically putting together a deck showing like here are our financial highlights um here's hiding what. the rest and burying the rest or no? yeah <laughs> deep into the <laughs> deep into the virtual uh what did we call it the the virtual room where the 3d tour yeah or whatever, yeah um <laughs> in the closet in the electrical <laughs> closet right um so as, on the buy side if we're one of many uh potential buyers we have to you know it's similar to real estate like we submit our offer then they kind of go back to the best options and they're like okay you're invited to the next round do more due diligence um submit an offer and then go back to the ones usually there's two or three rounds um go back to the ones that they're interested in and they're like okay now we move on to the third step of the process um and it's just each pro, pro it's just more due diligence so for example inspection you know you think in real estate it's like inspections and then um attorney review and just the, or i guess it would start with like open house and showings okay. and then inspections so you're opening it up to the world and i imagine if you're selling a business there's really 
only so many buyers of that business. Oh yeah, of course, because it's like one. It's a limited it's a particu- space. Particular <coughs> industry. Mm-hmm. What's the uh, balance sheet like for that? For the potential buyers, mm-hmm. whether they have cash or the capital, or well, I think of something like a it. like a grocery store, right? Like there's really only a few chains of grocery stores, and yeah. so if there, let's say there's a smaller private grocery store somewhere, they're if they, they want to sell, it's going to be a conglomerate that picks it, them up. Yeah, I mean, for example, look, look at um. Look at like Verizon, like if Verizon wanted to sell, who could potentially buy Verizon? AT&T, yeah, T-Mobile. exactly. And then the SEC is going to get involved and be like, "What are, you, are we doing?" Or the FCC, yeah, and I remember FFC, that deal, right? the uh, AT&T and uh, T-Mobile deal. Oh yeah, so, that was back in my time um, when I was in investment banking. But anyways, I digress. So um, as when I was working in investment banking, I was an analyst so I'm on the lowest on the totem pole so everything that needs to be done trickles down to me so I did okay. the financial analysis I did the comps I did the um, and it's it is really similar to uh, real estate you know you have to see whether this cash flow makes you know from an investment standpoint whether it makes sense and then from a comp standpoint like am I overpaying for this company compared to um, its comparables and then recent transactions so like like it's literally it's, it's the same thing yeah it's <coughs> with more zeros it's like yes just a few, a few more <laughs> but, um it's it's and it also like a company generates revenue it's more um but it, it is very similar when you look at um the valuation of a company versus um a home so sometimes i think that that's my downfall when i'm looking at a home like i'm like do you oh, think you're overly analytic Oh yes, and yeah. then my husband is too. So we're we're just like drilling, like that, narrowing these are oak floors. us they had maple ourselves. over there, and the cost per square foot for that is X. So like you're like fifteen off. <laughs> oh yeah, we're like we're like oh look at this. Like most people see a roof deck, and they're like oh this is wonderful, a built out roof deck, and we're like oh we have to tear this thing up, and like in order to see the roof, or like if we ever want to do anything on the roof, like we have yes. to tear it up. So we're on that note. The best way to go are the newer porcelain tiles that they put up there. Have you oh, seen these? No. So, oh, no. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I have. They're yes. like... So um, forget the deck. Forget a wood deck. Forget a, uh, a Trex deck. Mm-hmm. Just go with these lightweight porcelain tiles. They're not cheap, but they're very thin now, and they just have basically a base on them, mm-hmm. and you can pull them up. That or squares of Ipe are my favorite choice. Uh-huh. One or the other. I, I think I've seen the squares of Ipe. Yeah. But if you like I'm, wood, I'm that's intri- the best way to I'm go. I'm intrigued by the, these porcelain tiles. But anyways, yeah, it's... It's very similar. We're, we're kind of our own worst enemy because, you know, the more houses you see, the more you want. Yeah. Or the more you know you don't want. Well, you, yes, because you, you, you pinpoint the smaller items that you like, and now you're trying to find those things as you continue your search in one home. But you're like, we saw these in six homes scattered over six months, maybe. Now we're trying to find the perfect one. Why don't you just I'm, build? We're on a timeline, <laughs> and building takes two years. Yeah. And even, like, finding a good base like uh if we want to convert uh even like we we were looking into converting a Mm multi-unit we're like that's six to eight months of permitting and designing and then at best at best and maybe that's if you know what you want maybe you can rent it out at that point but then you're like then i'm a slum for a year and then um and then it's another year for the build itself yeah it's like so if you're lucky on the year if you're lucky and then also and and yes you get what you want like we we did a gut reno of our place and we loved it but now i'm kind of like like i like it but i don't really care like this is eight years later like i'm like the the worst thing that happens just as happy in a in a a place that we bought new would people build or they renovate the worst thing that happens is they're walking through the home later and they're telling you they're like We should have done this here, but we didn't. And we thought this was a good idea, but it wasn't. And I hear more remorse with people that build homes than success. You have so much pressure. There's so many decisions. And there are so many options. So you're like, I, okay, I want um, uh, this type of marble on my countertops. And they're like, okay, there's this type of marble, but here are all the different options. I'm like, oh, for goodness sake, just whatever's the cheapest one is that yes. like is that okay to say yeah and i'm like or or like how i pick out wine in a restaurant like the second cheapest one <laughs> like the, it's just whatever is 
like I can scrape by yes. without like a, I don't want the most expensive I don't want the cheapest but I want it to be close to the cheapest so I, I do feel like building it's a lot of pressure it's a lot of decisions and I just I like I I am design like I, I am creative like I like having that creativity come out but at the same time I need to be limited like yeah. it's like the smaller menu right when you yeah. have these, like, remember those old di- I mean, diners still have it, but you go through a oh, diner and there's like five pages. You're like, wait, I can get gyros and I can get a salad or like you're can, everything under the sun is here. And you guys are serving breakfast. Yes. Like, yes. <laughs> no, like, just give me like five options in each category and I can usually make the decision pretty well. Yeah. So I, that, that's why we don't want to build. Also the, the options aren't great for building at the, for us at least at this point. But, um, yeah, it's. Anyways, that's that's a whole nother. <laughs> I'm oh, like, yeah. I could talk Side, forever sidebar. about. Sidebar. So you moved back to Chicago. Moved back to Chicago. Decided um, I didn't want to stay in finance, not just investment banking, but I didn't want to stay in finance either. I didn't want to go into my options at that point were go into private equity, go into uh, go work at a hedge fund, um, or go to business school. And I wasn't. Int- I was never interested in business school. I think business school is great that just I was just not interested in it um I didn't want to go into private equity because that was slightly better slightly better than investment banking and then um I just wasn't that interested in um hedge fund working at a hedge fund so that was also what was it what tell me more why why wasn't finance for you even though you spent this time and it got established there well now looking back sometimes I'm like oh maybe I should have like pursued that a little more but m- more so I think my husband and again at the time fiance but we we wanted me to be around more so if I worked in a hedge fund or if I worked in private equity I would still be working about 70 70 hours a week which yeah. is maybe slightly better than the eight I know, guess that's better than 80. Hours. That is better than 80 or 100, but it is hard to start a family. So that was something that I, w- I cared a lot about. And then also I, re- I started getting into cooking and baking and I just found I just found that so fulfilling too, feeding people. Joy. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it, it, was, it started as a hobby and then I, I was like, maybe I can make this hobby or passion um, something that... I can monetize on. So, had you was, always been cooking, or was this something that you realized later in life? This was something I realized later in life. Mm-hmm. I was never, uh, and I, I just love that you could start with a recipe, and then kind of make it into your own thing. I'm sure your wife uh, does I, this a lot, like she, the market research, mm-hmm. uh, finding something she likes, and then making it into her own. I think there's a very sincere and honest joy that comes from feeding others and seeing the happiness on their face. It's just so pure, isn't yes, it? It's like, pure. It's, just like it's very, exactly what it is. Um, it is down to the earth, the purest form of joy you can give someone because you created something, mm-hmm. you put it in front of them, and they sincerely like it. They're not just giving you lip service. And you're feeding them. Mm-hmm. Like, you're nourishing their body. Like, there's yes. just something so um, innate about that. Yeah, you know? it's almost it's religious. Just like, yeah, and it's just very, um, it was just really fulfilling. So when I left investment banking, I kind of knew I, I wanted to pr- pursue this passion in some in some sense. Were I you think, and your husband married at that stage? When I left investment banking, we were engaged, and then we got married about a year later. And then when I was married, that's kind of when I felt like I wanted to, because I didn't have kids, so I wanted, I had a lot of time on my hands, so I wanted to do something, so... Um, we figured this was a great time to start a business because we um, we were in a position where um, we could fund it ourselves mm-hmm. and we had no kids, we didn't have any other commitments, it just felt like a good time to start a business. So that's when I started. Um, so, I mean, it, it, it didn't happen overnight um, and it took a few years for me to figure out what I wanted to do and where I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be by the park. Um, so it was on Clark Street um, and like, in Lincoln Park but um, so it took a few years and then that's when I got the cookie shop up and running um, in 2000 November 2015 so how did you figure out that's the the 
part of the industry you wanted to go into. And was there any inflection point where you're like, Kick, cooking is mine, I like this, I want to do this? So I, I decided in particular what I wanted to go into cookies. It was purely economical. Mm -hmm. um, again, as your, I'm sure your wife knows, um, and, and you know, meat costs money, <laughs> produce costs money. And meat goes bad. Yeah. Produce goes bad. Yeah. And then you have to store it. Yes. You, there's like all this. Cold space. storage costs. Yes. I, everything costs. And then you have to cook it too. Yeah. Like, not just, you have and to now the shelf it. life changed too because it's only going to last on the, on the shelf exactly. so long. Exactly, and then when you cook it, you need that space too. So, anyways, I, I was thinking of it, and this was like my analytical side, like yeah. from an investment standpoint. I'm like, oh my god, the the kitchen that I would have to build out for even just a cafe, mm -hmm. like even if I just wanted to make, let's just say I wanted to make sandwiches. Mm -hmm. That's all I wanted to do the space required for that like you need all this fridge space you need all and then like if i want to serve coffee i needed the of course you have to have the deluxe yeah. espresso yeah we i mean we serve coffee but like we didn't have the espresso but that's a whole nother thing yeah. and then you need a water line here and then you need how many sinks and then you need all this prep space it was just so that's why i um, narrowed it down to um cookies and we first started out with cookies because I'm like great this is the shelf life on cookies is long what is it? I mean it, do, it at depends. least a week right yeah I mean I don't I didn't serve only <laughs> week old cookies but like you know you it's not like with cupcakes where you have to throw them out at the end of the day or really well sorry at the end of I, I don't know what I, I am sure every, I imagine it's just if it gets too hard like you gotta toss it, and I'm sure every bakery has uh, has their own uh, take Standards. on that. Yeah, yeah. and I, I I do not wish to comment on that um, because I don't, you know, I'm in no position to uh, comment on that. But I do think like it's it was just you had to have a refrigerated display for uh, for cupcakes and things like that because you can't. So, but with cookies, it can they can remain room temperature. And I also wanted with to With the cupcakes, be, is it the frosting? Is that part of the reason? Yeah, the buttercream. Yeah, makes sense. Um, it's not the cake itself, it's the buttercream. Um, but I wanted to be like, kind of like, like the Stan's Donuts of mm -hmm. cookies. and I Or like the Molly's Cupcakes of cookies. And I just felt like that, that was the other reason why I picked cookies, was I felt like a cookie is this delicious pastry that really hasn't been reinvented or... Um, Re, uh, you know, just expand it on. Yeah, and and they vary so much. I yeah, mean, the the cookies my grandma makes are completely different than the cookies my wife makes, and those are all different than I. I think the best go to cookie you can get in the city that's like reasonable and they're everywhere is pop belly like pop belly has really fresh and i good. always say that yes. i always say that i'm always like pop bellies has these delicious cookies and they're like they're the best yeah they're like I, i've never really thought of that i'm like well you like they're like a job I, I don't know they're cheap for they're what like they are dollar fifty and or something they're approachable and they're everywhere they're ubiquitous yeah and they're always they're always good they're, they're fresh very too consistent. Yeah. yes so that was something they, I, they get rid of them at the end of the day if you go to a pop belly a little bit before closing they'll just give them to you Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> that's where I'm headed tonight <laughs> um, for dessert. Um, so I, and I always thought that like cookies, sometimes you go to a place and cookies like four and a half yeah. dollars and you're like, this is. For one. For one. The cupcake, or, or I sort of kind of like, understand it. And, and they're like, it, it's like this big. And I'm like, well, can I have a quarter of that for a quarter of the cost? Yeah. So, so we always make, we try, I tried to be reasonable in my pricing. Of course we were located in prime lincoln park yeah um, what's your address 2342 north lincoln, uh, north clark street okay right across the street from that big apple okay or from big apple um it was so we're prime lincoln park um everything was expensive and then also it's just there wasn't a lot of walk by traffic and it's hard if you're selling two dollar cookies it's hard yeah. to <laughs> like how many cookies do you have to sell to make rent. Well, that's what we've been figuring out with my wife's business. And we're like, okay, so we sell a thousand wraps a month or a hundred wraps a month equals this. We need to sell a thousand a month to actually make a business out of this. She's like, how many outlets do we need? Yeah, and you're like, wait, a thousand wraps. Like you have to actually like visualize a thousand yes. wraps. And you're like, oh my 
God. And we'll be lucky if we sell 40 here in one place. And so we need, okay, wow. This, this adds up really quick. So we and need at least 20 venues, at least 20 locations people to go. And that's assuming you have that consistent business too. And then on top, like, and this is you selling out of a, Yes. A backpack, right? Yes. So this isn't like no business insurance, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, yeah, sorry, the not, to, like, there. not to like not to like get you guys yeah. in trouble, but yeah. like, it, you, like you don't think about like the bi business costs yes. that like everyone takes advantage. So is we soon realize that we were bleeding, bleeding money because so, it's like. So I'm I find that funny because you are so analytical. Uh -huh. I, it must have been passion to really push this through because I know oh, you were, we were looking at numbers. Too. Yes, we were yes. very like. Oh, we'll do this. These numbers make sense. Yeah, I was like, you know, if I just tweak, like, I, I and I re remember because this, I built out this very fancy um, financial model because that was what I was very used to doing. And I, anytime we had a problem, we just built out this very financial. Let's work like, the pivot table fancy. here, and we'll get this. Yeah, I was like offset the. Yeah, and I was always. Uh, I was like, let's just change the assumptions here. And so in my model, I remember plugging in. I remember going to um, coffee shops and like bakeries and looking around and seeing how many people were there. So I'd be like, okay, let's say there were five people here and I've been here for about 10 minutes. I would just automatically assume that that, like I could, that this could was replicate linear. Starbucks? Yeah, well, that, that this was linear. That like, you know, if I went at noon on uh, Wednesday, that was the equivalent at, as like, Oh, so uh, every hour Thursday. of the day, there's going to be this amount of people there. Yeah, like Got I didn't it. really think about the f natural flow of like some hours are busier. And I didn't even take into account that um, the times when I visited are probably busy times. Prime times. Yeah, because like no one's going, like no one really goes like right before. Flow. That's That's the scariest thing about having a business because you can really get, you can get bogged down by the details but at the same time you have the irrational part of your brain that's like yeah but I want to cook things for people and I want to provide this joy and I want this vision I have this vision and I want then, to make it happen yes and the minute you start thinking about it it just snowballs so mm -hmm. you're like I was like okay I want to open up a cookie shop oh my god it'll be so cute we'll call it by the park oh my god it'll be so cute like we will have we had a little children's area and I'm like because it's like a little playground in the park oh my god we're by the zoo it'll be like like we'll get all these people who come once once by. we really take off we'll get the store next the place next door yeah, we'll, we'll take that that'll be down. by the zoo yeah. by the zoo and by the yeah and, and, and then i'm like and then i can expand it to like la then we'll be by the beach and like, <laughs> <laughs> like, i was like thinking of all of these like it, and then i was like oh and all of our cookies will be named after different parks like that'll be so cute so you start to romanticize everything and then when it comes into play. They're like, what the is a Linkin Park cookie? I don't know what that means. And I'm like, well, it's like, you, do you know what I mean? Like, they're like, I, I, I just want to know what's the, what's we, the chocolate chip cookie? What's we we the dealt sprinkle? with this exact same thing. Yeah. So we, on the beginning, we were naming these wraps. We're coming up with these funny names for wraps and creative names. No. No one cares. No they one like, cares. I want to know what's inside yes, the they, wrap. They don't want to grab it and have to look at the ingredients. They need to see from a mile away, that's the chicken wrap. Okay, what's yeah, that works? Yeah, chicken Caesar yep. or like... um spinach feta yeah they want to know so yeah we you you realized early on before i was like how do they not know what the lincoln park cookie is it says <laughs> it right below lincoln park but they you've lost their attention by the time yes. they finished the they've reached cookie so um it was it, i mean and these are all things that you learn yeah. <laughs> once you start a business and like now in hindsight i'm like well duh why would i like um why would anyone think that we we eventually renamed or we we kept the names like lincoln park cookie and we're like the cinnamon bun cookie so we would think of these flavors that each cookie tried to emulate and then kind of we we had a funfetti cookie like uh, the birthday cookie okay but yeah these are things that you're like oh this is going to be so original and i'm going to be the first one to do it and you're like now i know why no one's done this before like there's a reason why no one like name these cookies off of a bunch of random parks it's because no one knows what they're eating have you been to crumble or insomnia I've cookies i've been to insomnia uh -huh. um i have not been to crumble but when i heard of what insomnia was, I was like this is the stupidest idea i've ever heard this there's no way this can last there's no way this can succeed and they're still on wells like 10 years later or however I long mean, they've we, been there yeah they have that location on lincoln park or on lincoln ave that's 
been thriving. And I remember thinking, like, if insomnia can do it, like, so can we, because, like, our cookies are better than theirs. But they they were just smarter. Like, even though you, you have to compromise in some ways, but you have to make it up, but you make it up in other ways. And yeah. You just have to appeal to the masses. I had a friend who was asked me for some business advice recently, and she, because she wants to open up a, cook, uh, a coffee shop. And she has all these, like, um, ideas on, like, what she wants to do for that. And I think they were all good. Um, and then I was talking to another friend about it. And then my other friend goes, oh, yeah, you know what she should do that would really draw people in is make her own nut milks. Like, make her own nut milks. And the nut milks are made in-house. And I was like, no. Do you understand how much time that'll take? How much time, how much money yeah. to, like, buy almonds just to, like, crush them up to, like, make some milk. I'm like... Do you ever do you ever make that, by the way? I have not because, we, we, uh, again, I'm, like, the time and the money. Like, so, I'm just going to buy it from, like... Sidebar. So, t- do this. I want you to do but this. But my family used to make soy milk, and it was excellent. It's so good. So... It is so much better. Dro- I agree. You drop the almonds in. You go for the day. Mm-hmm. You come home and blend it. You're done. It's very straightforward if you can do it that way. And if you, I don't know what kind of blender you have, but you can take... Like oh, a, like a Vitamix or something? Well, you can do that, but you can also have like an oyster blender. An uh-huh. oyster blender's accessory will fit on top of any mason jar. Uh-huh. So if you just leave it in the mason jar for the day, uh-huh. then come home, pop the top on, done it, you're done. That's it. Strain See, it and you're done. See, I I think that's brilliant. But like, I'm like... Do you're not you know doing how, it for a business. Yeah, I'm like, no. do you know how much you have to charge for like the upcharge yes. to have like your homemade macadamia milk? Like, that's like, milk, oh my god, yeah. I'm like, that's like $8. That's yes. like more than the latte. Well, there's supposedly one almond in a thing, oh, less than one almond in a thing of almonds. Oh, that is interesting. Yeah. I never even thought of that it that way because it's all liquid, right? Yeah. But anyways, um, there are a lot, everyone, one thing that you realize when you go into business, everyone has an opinion yeah. on what you should be doing and what you should not be doing and um, ways to, and, and they're wa- not warranted. They're not yeah. tested, and they're often not wanted. Often not wanted. <laughs> so uh, the hard part, I, what I had trouble with was sifting through that. Because initially I was like, everyone shut up. Like, I'm, I know what I'm doing. Leave me alone. But Or like, just let me figure this out. And then shortly I realized, I'm like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing. Let me listen to all of your suggestions and let's do all of them. And, and then, then I was like, confused. wait, that was also a bad idea because you don't know what you're, you guys don't know what you're talking about yeah. either. Because they would say stuff like, oh, we wish you had like a, a kid's thing during the day. And we'd be like, okay, here's a kid's thing during the day. And they were like, <laughs> and no one no would one come. Shows up. And we're like, <laughs> but we made this kid thing for yeah. you. You said you would come and you didn't come. So it's, you, you have to do what's right for your business and it, it is I, I used to think that I could start a business because I, I viewed myself as an intelligent um, hard working young lady and I um, and I thought that and I was like oh I'm more intelligent and more hard working than like wh- whoever's running this place and they're they're doing well so that automatically means success and it's like no that's actually not true some people are just smarter and some like they were smarter about certain things well it's than often the things you don't see and frankly there's always an element of luck too you just well, you don't there's know there's a big element yes. of luck and also managing people yeah. i wasn't great i realized that i wasn't great at managing people because i was very hard I, I i like to do the i like doing work and i just assume that people also like to do work apparently they don't when they don't need to i'm the same way i'm not good at managing people I, I'm good at what I do, but telling people what to do and how to do it isn't my strong Because by the time you're done telling people, you're like, oh. I could have done well, it. Well, yeah, I, you know what? Never mind. Just let me. I'm a snowplow. I'm a yeah. snowplow employee like or employer. <laughs> like, I, I was like, never mind. I'll take care of it for you. You just sit there and look pretty. Yeah. Like, you just sit there Watch. and like, <laughs> Next while, time, you while can do I'm it this burning way. my money, like, paying you. Um, so I, I, I realized that I wasn't good at and delegating. I, did all the baking I did all the baking which was so in hindsight again that was so stupid like how could that have been how could how could we have maintained that what if 
I got pregnant towards it, and that's why we what ended up. What if you want to go on vacation? What if, what if you want to do anything? Oh, what there was toward the end when I want if I wanted to go away for a weekend, we just closed. Yeah. Or um, I would have to bake a lot before, and then we would just close one of the days, so that it was just so hard. Um, toward the end, also we we figured out other ways to make money. For example, we rented out the space, which was wonderful because it was guaranteed. It was it, probably more profitable than anything else you did. It was actually more profitable than anything else I we did. That. I was like, oh my god, this is equivalent to me selling like like uh, two hundred cookies. Why did I, if I don't have to pay 200 cookies to do this? And there's also such a need for that yeah. in Chicago. Like People every, love spaces. I mean, especially oh God, now. People, it's been emphasized more than ever now. People were clam... Like, I had parties booked back to back. There were people who were frustrated because we were never open for business because I was always, like, closed for an event. Yeah. And people couldn't understand why I would be closed for an event. And I'm like, well, they're paying hundreds of dollars to rent out my space and I don't have... All I have to do is stand there and like... And you probably don't even need to do that. I mean, I I would hire someone to stand yeah. there. <laughs> or um, I would stand there and it was just... And then, yes, I had to bake some stuff, but like it was always predictable. I'm like, you guys paid for this much and that's what you get. Yeah. Versus like when we're open, our doors are open, I'm like hustling to sell someone a $2 cookie or like to get... Maybe they'll like upgrade to a three dollar coffee. Like it's you know it is just so. And I'm sorry, I'm being very can- yeah, candid good, about um. Uh, well, a lot of a lot of people is. have a lot of romantic ideas about what ownership is of a business, and these are the things that people need to hear. And, I'm, and people hear them in lots of different places. But I bet when you were starting the cookie business, you're like. The margin on cookies is fantastic. Look yeah, at this. you're like, this is like I, ten cents, and like yes, I can sell, sell this for, for like two dollars. Then the volume comes into play, and you're like, mm. and you're like, how many two dollar cookies do I need to sell to yeah. make my rent? <laughs> like and, my five thousand dollar rent. Where do I find the rent? line to do that? Like, so how many places can sell them? And you're just selling in one place. Mm-hmm. Were you ever trying to sell them elsewhere? Um. So we. All, Another thing that we opened up to toward the end, and I wish we would have done this earlier, was catering. Like yeah. catering to um, uh, offices, and I don't know how. Well, actually, like my husband's back every day of the week in the office now. So, and they're they're cater they they bring in caterers. They should bring in your wife. I'll uh, recommend that. Please. Um, but they just everything's expensed. Yeah. So they just um, they're they're like we'll take four hundred cookies, and I was like. You will take 400 cookies? Just all all at once? They have a budget. They have a budget, and as long as they're below the budget, and sometimes it doesn't even matter. It's just like, we want something nice for these people. They're coming in. We need something special. And I'm the same way. When I have the right clients, I'm like, I don't care what lunch costs. Like, okay, (laughs) dinner, none of this matters. You're a client. And I'm not talking to them, but like my wife will come with on a lot of these dinners. And she's like, where are we going? I'm like, I don't care what the bill is. It's it's, You don't want to say that necessarily, but it is the truth. You're like... This is more important. Oh, yeah. This person's going to buy a yeah, million dollar the, house. The commission like, from the sale yeah, like, is way more important. I don't care what they like order. Then that's like $200 get, dinner. Get the like nice five, bottle of wine. Do whatever you want. Let's yeah. have fun and enjoy it. Don't think about the, the prices. Let's get the market price yeah. item. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the, lo- the seafood Let tower. Let those truffles just, yeah. keep, just keep going. Shower yeah. the truffles. Yeah. like, But it's it's like that with companies. That, or even, I remember at J.P. Morgan, everything was billed to the client. Yeah. Um, so we would, we always had, I think we got to spend, back then it was like $25 on, on dinner every night. Mm-hmm. And I would go to Pop Bellies and get like two sandwiches and a bunch of cookies. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I'm like, this is going to be my meal for the next day and a half or, you know, you bet. So oh, you were young once too. I can tell. Cause that, that's the thought process right there. You're like, this is going to be lunch and dinner. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I used to, if, if I wasn't staying for dinner, which wasn't often, but like sometimes I wouldn't stay for dinner, I'd be like, okay, well, I'm going to get some snacks. Yeah. So that, like, oh, in a bunch of Diet Cokes. And I don't care that it's $2 Diet Cokes because I, I get $25, so I can have 12 My, my um, first office was at Belden, uh, like real office was at Belden and Clark. Oh, that's right by where we live. I know, right? And so, right by your shop, too. And so, I would go, my favorite place was Sultan's, right up here. Yeah. And be like, I can get, and this is like, I'm broke, I'm just starting, I'm yeah. like trying to figure things out. 
And I'm like, okay, I can get that dinner at Sultan's. I'm like, that is lunch and dinner. This is great. This oh, is yeah, great and it's meal. like, what, what, like five ninety nine dollars or something like, like that. that. So it was something yes. ridiculous. And it's, yeah, I remember, I remember New York, every corner there was like a $1 falafel pita. Yep. And that's like where I would go when I had just spent too much money at the bar. And I was like, okay, I don't have any money left. I need that $1 pita. So, so. your husband, it, as a spouse... To someone who's doing something similar, but not nowhere near as capital intensive or time intensive. How is your husband with this? Because I imagine this was this could put a strain on your relationship. So we were in a unique time. So this was another reason why we picked this that particular time in our lives to start a business. He was on his non-compete, so he was um, getting paid to not work. Okay. Um, so I. Uh, he he was around. He was he was also looking into his own um, into his own thing. He okay, was, doing his own shop. He, uh, his own business. He's uh, more. It, it's more tech. So okay. He, he, What's his space? What does he do? He's in high frequency trading. Okay. But it's very technical. It's very um, computer programming. So he um, during that time he he started he wrote an app and it was um, classic books. It's called Jupiter. It's no longer functioning, um, but it was basically uh, uh, classical, classic books that um, you can have completely downloaded on your um, on your phone, and you can read for free there. Okay. Again, the market for that wasn't very. So great. like Amazon, like. Um, it was almost like yeah, like Kindle. Kindle, Kindle yeah. Um, but he wanted a social aspect to it, so okay. you can highlight passages. Like he, he loves highlighting passages. I read quite a bit. I never highlight. I any. highlight everything. Really, that's how my husband is. Like, <laughs> and I never cannot... go back to it. <laughs> yeah, but it, I'm like, but it helps me retain it. I always see like his books, and they're, they're like these really nice books, and it's just covered in highlighter. And I'm like, do you even know what you highlighted? Like, do you? Even... And there's always a highlighter in there. Yeah. Um, I, I would buy just, when I so I, now I'm everything's digital because it's just easier. I have it in my phone. Oh, and then the Kindle is so nice. Absolutely, you can just like save it. But I used to have this particular pen. This pen was expensive, but it was a highlighter and a pen on each side, mm -hmm. and it had the little um, tabs so you could pull them out. Yes, like the I remember those pens. Yeah, it was like six bucks or something, and like for a college student, that was for someone I got to college it was a lot. And but, they only had like. 15 tabs. Yes. And you so get, you the, you be, get the They refill. were very precious. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I would always have that pen though. That pen was with me no matter what I was reading. I always had it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember that's, that's how my husband is. He like just highlights everything. I just, I read fiction. So I, I don't highlight anything. I just read the book when I'm done. I'm like, that was a good book or that wasn't a great book. I, um, I joined a book club and I've read more fiction in the last 12 months than I've ever read in my entire life, probably. But really? Yeah. I think that's what a book, because you are you have to read it. You yeah. have to read it. Exactly. <laughs> and I've disagreed on some things, and then the guy who like brought me in, who's a friend of mine, he was like, that's the point. And I was, I was complaining. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want to read this. He's like, that's the point. And I was like, yeah. that's a good point. Yeah. And it's also like you you start to learn different stuff. I started re reading fiction to become a better, just a better writer. Mm -hmm. um, I think it I think I I think you're right. I know what you're saying. I know what you mean. And and to acknowledge what's good writing, mm -hmm. what's bad writing. Um and I think it it does help. Yeah. To cuz otherwise that when I didn't read, I'm like the stuff that I would write, like even just an email to someone, I'm like, "Man, this took me so long to write this email to someone." What? Or even just speaking to them, I'm like I sound so you know. there's, there's a really good Mark Twain quote, and I use it whenever my emails get a little long, mm -hmm. and say, "Sorry, I didn't have enough time. Um, sorry for how long this is. I didn't have enough time to make it shorter." Because yeah. that's the reality. Like it takes time to make something concise and better written. Yeah. Anyone can write something long and a bunch of just kind of throwing up on oh, a page. Oh, yeah, easy. it's because it's very organic. Yeah. <laughs> whenever people are long-winded, I call it. I'm like, that's very organic. Uh, they're they're very organic uh, writers. Uh, they just whatever they're thinking they put it on a page but it does take time and I think um, skill to write something concise yet um, descriptive and to be an efficient writer yeah most things to be cut in half yeah so your husband's on the non-compete um so my husband's on the non-compete and um, and he actually rented out an office on 
on Clark and Belton. It's very cute. So he he would come in for his like you know free cup of coffee and go back to work and just pick up his free cookie um, during during this time. Um, so it was, but it was it was hard because I, I had to work weekends all the time. Monday was my one day off. Mm -hmm. um, and he wasn't on the non-compete the entire time. He eventually went back to work. So that was also hard when he went back to work. We weren't really seeing each other. Yeah. Um, so that became an issue. I mean, and then also I got, I became pregnant and just realized that I didn't want to be running this business anymore. We weren't, it didn't look like we were going to make a turn for the better we were stuck in this terrible lease with how long were you running the business until you realized that the the lease uh, that we didn't want to do this we wanted to leave I, I think after a year of opening a year into it I was like oh dear let's try to get out of this and our lease was awful it was just the landlord was terrible he, he actually owns a number of businesses. He owns all of that. He's notorious as a terrible, terrible yes, person. Yes, yes. And everyone warned... Uh, my Guy lives in my LA? My agent... Yes. Yes. He's yes. notorious. My agent warned me about him, but she didn't want to offend him too much because he's got a lot of property. Yeah. Um, so she was like... He owns all of Clark Street, pretty much. He owns all of Clark Street, and that's why all of Clark Street is, is so in shambles. The like, businesses that just come and go. No one ever stays. They come and go. And everyone... And he doesn't is, care. He's got a lot... We got, he, he has a he lot has of a income. Tax, yeah, he has other income coming from other places. So, so for him, it's just a tax write-off. He, he doesn't care if it's all, occupied or exactly, not. Exactly, exactly. So that when it's occupied, he, he gets the income from it, and he charges astronomical rent. Yeah. Again, we didn't have a capital issue, so we were like, I was like, whatever, this is the perfect space. Like, let's get it. Um, but he, and then when it's not occupied, he's like, great, this is this offsets my other income, and he owns property in Florida. Yeah. Uh, other income elsewhere so this is great either way 50 win-win we signed a five-year lease and we had to pay every cent of that lease wow. so we were only occupied that space for two years so we ended up having to pay out the remainder of that rent and he would he did he was like if you and the lease it was silly of me to us to sign the lease and this was a big lesson learned another reason why we are very particular with our in um, our home search because we're like no never again yeah. like we um we're like we are going to inspect every inch of this house um we are going to have multiple inspections <laughs> it's not going to be pleasant um but the the lease was terribly written so not so against us yeah. like it was like if you try to it, it was like if you close for more than five days at a time we can sue you if you because uh, we were thinking about just shutting down the shop and keeping it empty yeah um and then and then just paying rent and they were like no you have to continue paying rent and run the shop and if you try to sublet you can sublet but we have to approve every um applicant and every time we need to approve them it, it costs two thousand dollars so they can keep reject you know they can keep rejecting yeah. it was maybe even ten thousand dollars i can't even remember but it something was, so absurd where you don't even go down the avenue of entertaining it well they they also have no incentive mm -hmm. to approve it because they're like well i could i, I have could you just, yeah and they're like oh but you can keep bringing us people and we could just keep rejecting yeah. them for ten thousand we'll dollars yeah yeah to, you're in a default to, that's fine we'll sue you and ruin your life yeah so um we just didn't have did you have to sign personally uh, yeah, we were, my, my husband had to personally guarantee yeah. it. And they, I mean, he was awful. He, he asked for our bank state, like wanted to see what we had. And I have heard over a dozen stories about this landlord. Oh yeah. From completely unconnected people. He, he, he's been in trouble with the aldermen and all. He doesn't care. And he, 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 he has the, I don't live there. He has he the position matter. of power. It's like I own this. I can do whatever I want with it. That's nice. I own neighbor half of Lincoln Park. Yeah, and that's, that's nice neighborhood association. You like you don't like the shuttered. You don't like the places uh, shuttered. That's great. I don't care. I mean, he he keeps his properties really nice. Like mm -hmm. they're very the well maintained. Yeah, yes. they're very well maintained. So that's how he seduces all these like tenants. And when we said that we were. Um, 
first of all, we bought out the rest of our lease. So we basically paid up front the remainder of our lease. Immediately after we told him that we were leaving, he started shuffling people in to see the place. So we're like in the middle of an event or like we're in the middle of opening and he's like bringing it. You know, can you imagine if you're like your clients like selling their place and people are just coming in and showing the house? I love like, that. No, that sounds great It's to me. just like... I was like, you, they don't even give. They didn't even give us a warning. They yeah. would just bring them in, um, and it's. Just you know, you know what that would be like. It'd actually be like, let's say you were selling your place mm-hmm. and you went to hire a broker, and the broker's like, you know what? I love this place. Just sell it to me. Yeah. But then in his contract, he puts so he can assign it to anyone else. Yeah. And then you're selling it for a million, let's say, and then he's trying to flip it for like one point two, and you're like, whoa, and he's bringing in hordes of people. That's what that would be like. Well, it's exactly like that because he, we built out this, it was a, it was a retail space. So we had to put in the black iron. We had to, uh, or fix the black iron. There was really old black iron and we had to fix it. I built out a kitchen, bought appliances. What'd you spend on that? On the whole build out? I think the whole build out might've been close to a hundred. Um, How much on just the kitchen? Just the kitchen. The majority of that because yeah. everything in the walls was retail um so it was the majority of that maybe it was 40 40 or 50 but that's not including appliances so yeah close to anyways he ended up leasing our space we i think we paid it was like four thousand something around four thousand for our space to rent it and then because we built out this nice kitchen and we're leaving the appliances yep. because what's the point of taking the appliances at yeah. this point it's harder for me to figure out where to park them. Uh, I always give that argument when people are moving and they'll be moving across the country. And I'm like, my clients like your furniture. They didn't like the price. They're like, let's try to work it out. They're like, no, we'll take it with us. I'm like, you gotta pay thousands of dollars to haul that. Just just leave it, come on. That's been our (laughs) negotiation. We're always like, hey, we'll take it at this price if it's furnished. Like, cause this furniture goes with the place and you're going to make this furniture work there but anyways he ended up leasing the space at six thousand dollars a month because of our nice build out that we and then we on top of what we paid to yeah get out of the lease so it was just this what ended up I taking mean, the space another bakery they are now gone yeah and now another bakery is coming in and i'm like don't you guys get it this is not the right space for a bakery <laughs> well it was more of a cafe but still another cafe is coming in and I'm like, okay, you guys don't learn. Yeah. Um, and they were only there two years too. I mean, it, it, they had a, you know, the pandemic, but still I don't, it's not. Well, what, what most entrepreneurs do in this space is they have a dream mm-hmm. and they, sh- they need to just kill the dream right mm-hmm. off the bat. But they go in and they burn through their life savings. And I've seen it time and time again because I've I frequent many of these places and I, I can tell. I can tell And they're burnt out too. Yes, they just yes. want to give up, but they're like, I have so much capital invested and yes. this is all the money we have. And and they're like, like oh, we're good at doing this one thing. Yeah. Maybe it's making dumplings, right? Like we're gonna make dumplings. I'm like, okay, that's great, but do the numbers, does it really make sense? And they also don't think do you like wanna that. make dumplings for the rest of your life? Yes. Like do you serious I mean it's it's hard. You get tunnel vision. You get really excited about tunnel the concept. Tunnel vision is a great idea. Yeah. And, That's exactly and then also is. once you're in it, we, I buried my head in the sand. I didn't want to see how much money we're losing. Anyways, the, well, cause all it, this whole thing No, no one wants me. to fail at anything, and it, it fails, right? And There's no the other way to you're say you're so prideful, it. too. Yes. <clears throat> you're just, uh, you, how could I possibly fail? I'm, yeah. I'm intelligent. I'm hardworking. These are all the things that you need to, for, to be successful. Maybe to be successful, but not necessarily successful in business. Yes. Um, or have, owning a business. Uh-huh. Um, and, and all it would have taken is for you to go on Oprah. And it would have all been good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, One endorsement. Yes, exactly. I was like, how do I get Christy Teigen to come to my into my shop? Or like, can one of the Kardashians <laughs> like I'll make I'll make a special Kardashian cookie of like one we'll of them. We'll send the plane. Like, okay, come on. Yeah, please. one of them will like just <laughs> buy a cookie. And, and just like make a two second post about it. Um, yeah, we, so all of this to say, that's that's why we, I started, it was just so, it was such a hard experience like having 
a business and while I do feel like it opened a lot like now as as a mom and um, just like my life now I feel like it really did open a lot of doors for me and like I but I I don't want to do it again but I do love the creative outlet that baking that I get from baking and decorating cakes so that's why I continue to do it but just I love being able to help others, so help um, the needy, because there is so much need in Chicago right now. And then on the other hand, you also spread the word about different organizations. A lot of the organizations that I um, ask people to donate to, most of them haven't heard of them. You know, everyone hears of the big so, ones, right? So let's talk about that. So the bakery doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. You leave it behind. but. Now, now, how did I get back into it? Yes. How did how did you make the transition? <clears throat> and whoever's watching this isn't going to know what you're doing. So you're making birthday cakes mm -hmm. or any kind of yeah, cake, yeah. I suppose. And Desserts, yeah. And you're donating all the proceeds to the charity of your choice. Yes. So people make um, <clears throat> a direct donation. So I have a special link with um, currently my uh, charity of choice is Revive Center. Okay. And um, we have a goal of $500 a month, which is kind of a modest goal, but... Um, and especially because most of my um, customers are incredibly generous. Um, what, what does one of the cakes that you're making, where does it start and where does it end on pricing? What's your typical order? I, I actually say, I usually say this is up to your discretion. Okay. So you, you donate what you feel like you can, um, you know, what is that you one of your own customers? That was one of my friends. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, you donate what you think is a appropriate um, and then sometimes they ask for some sort of guidance so sometimes they say okay well in the shop I would have normally charged X um, I do hate that response when someone's like just donate whatever you think is right I'm like I need you to tell me what's right yeah it's it's because you're like I don't want to be offensive yes right? I, I don't it, want to be not, too low but I can't you know clear out the bank yeah, for it right like I'm not paying a thousand dollars for this cake. <laughs> like I mean it's a six inch cake I know so <laughs> it, it is really it the range is big mm -hmm. but I do I do like to do that because I the people who are generous can usually spare it mm -hmm. usually they're generous because usually their response to whatever you whatever they're doing is oh no problem yeah so like they're not, then, it doesn't phase them and then sometimes <laughs> people want want to know just because they don't want to they're, they're like I don't want to pay pay $50 and then have it which I think is a reasonable price and have you be like well actually it was supposed to be 80 yeah. or um, so I also don't tell them that I can, I can see like what they that I can see what they pay because um, I do get a receipt that shows what they pay so I don't but I don't like to tell them that because I'm like whatever you donate is generous like when you donate that is a very generous um, I, I I think that's Whatever you decided is what you think you can spare, and that's that's great. But anyways, I got back into this because I I closed the big shop, and that was that was that. And then people started emailing me, texting me, calling, messaging me that they wanted me to make their cake, or that they had this great experience at the big shop, and they wanted me to make their cake for their kids. And I just and when you have the shop, yes, it was. It was difficult, but it was just, it was really re rewarding and you build a lot of relationships and it's just, um, you still feel that camaraderie with um, those people who came and I felt like I, so that's how I got back into it was that past customers reaching out to see if um, I'll make their cakes and then from there it was just word of mouth. Um, all of a sudden I was doing all of their friends cakes and then um, initially it started out I would just charge them um, material cost so I never I didn't charge for my time um, and I didn't charge like a premium on what I would like I would didn't factor in like what I would have normally charged in the shop um, I just did it purely mark just purely material cost this is what the cake to topper cost this is about what the ingredients like flour and eggs and milk cost and this is what like the cake box cost and then this is the price of your cake and then when the pandemic hit I stopped making cakes for a little bit but when I started again it just I started 
when I started again, it was because I started seeing that there were really these pockets of need in Chicago. Um, the pandemic just made it so much harder for these people to get um, their hands on resources. Because remember, in the beginning of the pandemic, you could like what can sound going to Costco or something. Yeah. Like it, was, when it, it can sound callous, but you know, a lot of people that don't have housing or are in need are on the street. Well, if the people aren't walking the street and if they're not frequenting their favorite place, how are those people going to get any money? Oh, there was a place. Um, there was a there's a guy who stands outside of Starbucks. Um, and he asked people to buy him coffee or buy him food. So every day my, my husband used to go to that Starbucks. This was before the pandemic. He used to go to that Starbucks every day and buy this guy like, <laughs> like a frappuccino and like a, a breakfast sandwich. So that's like $12 every day. Yeah. And when the pandemic hit, I remember we started making our, obviously we started making our coffee from home and even those places they were closed yeah. or initially and I remember my husband going oh I hope Reggie's okay I hope he's getting because like he was like I, I mean that was probably a big part of his wait does Reggie have a like a like a radio voice sort of oh are we we might be talking about the same Reggie I haven't about... seen Reggie in a long time okay does he have a very strong voice um I think so I haven't I haven't seen Reggie in a long time my husband used to see him every day yeah, he used to hang out at that cor- at your corner, right? Like yeah, Clark the and Belden? Clark, Clark and uh, Dickens. Oh, and Dickens? Okay, wrong. The, the, the it was the Starbucks. Like he would stand right in front of the Starbucks, okay. um, and he would be like, "Man, I hope that Reggie is okay." Like during the because no one's going out, no one's buying other people, and then also everyone's terrified. Yeah. So everyone's terrified of other people, just like anyone, anyone in general. So it was. So that, I remember he said that, and I was kind of like, oh, man. Even, like, the women's board I'm on, we were, like, we, we work with a lot of, uh, we work on a lot of outreach, and a lot of the places that we work with, they have kids and uh, families that they house, and we're like, they can't even get diapers because, you know, everyone's stocking up on everything. So they can't even get, like, if we can't even get diapers, how are they supposed to yeah. access these things? So. That was just something that I wanted to bring more attention to. So I felt like by asking these people to donate to these kind of these smaller organizations, um, really starts to spread the word a little bit more about like, hey, there are lots of organizations that need, have need in Chicago, um, and they're small. And I also what I also love about these organizations is that one hundred dollars, you know where. It's not just like a drop in the bucket. Like if you donate to some national organization, you have no idea where that goes. Yeah. It's probably processing costs. It, it goes to someone's salary. Yeah. Lots so and lots of people's salaries. The salaries or like a pro- processing cost. Yeah. It's not going to like the... Nonprofits are some of the best and worst things that exist in this country. Yeah. So that's why I love these small organizations because they're um, the ones that I happen to pick. I, I found through my women's board so they tend to be affiliated with um some sort of some they're usually some sort of faith base so it's just you see where the money goes like we they have drives where you can use that hundred dollars and buy like tampons or something for for the women who are housed there or you can buy diapers for the kids or um you can buy uh, and i just love that it was just such a you could see where the money went and yeah. how it helped people. So I really like organizations like that for just that reason. You're like, okay, I've actually, funny enough, I've given tampons to one of these organizations yeah. before. They're like, just pick up, pick up a box of tampons. I was like, that's it? Like, like yeah, I'm like, okay. But that's that like works more for helpful me. than you, you donating they like, a hun- like $50 yes. to yes. some It goes right in the hands organ- of someone. Exactly. So I, so our, my cake, uh, the, my like direct, Take link that goes towards um it's 500 our goal is 500 dollars a month um we started this like a month or two ago we've already exceeded um again due to um very generous customers um we always exceed that um but it goes towards feeding it's they're actually using that 500 dollars. they're purchasing meals for people who walk in and don't have any money and they need food so it's I love that food is feeding other 
pe- goes towards feeding other people. You know, yes. I, I just I feel like that's very poetic in mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. So it's five hundred dollars towards a food fund for um, the homeless or the um, extremely needy. And this particular organization, Revive, they do amazing things. They, they help people, uh, low-income families with their rent. They help um, those who need, um, who can't afford it, with occupational therapy, things like that. Um, food, just every basic needs. We we've donated like paper towels or um, just like really again, uh, shampoo, like things that you don't think that you just don't really initially think you take of. for granted yeah toothpaste toothbrushes um so and so the, whenever anyone orders a cake you're saying donate to this yeah i send them a link and i'll make you the cake and how do they decide what the cake is how, do, how does the cake choice work oh usually they decide that usually they're like hey i want a cake for this date um for my son's birthday party it's spider-man themed um and again, since it's, one thing that I do love is that because it is up to, it, it's donation based, so it is up to my discretion whether I, I take the order. So I can decide how far in advance I need. So it gives me a little more flexibility in that, like if I'm running a bake shop, I just take whatever I, you know, all the, all the clients I can get. But here I can decide, well, you know, I'm actually out of town that week. So so I, I can't make it work or um, I have like six other cakes that weekend I can't make it work well it's work. a noble idea for you so it's you know you, you have your own discretion whatever you can do and, and that's reasonable and understandable and and I can also be like okay well here you know if you have some inspiration that you'd like you can send it my way but ultimately I'm deciding what's going on the cake mm-hmm. so because before I used to get like can you make this like crazy thing and like this out of fondant and I want it to be it? shaped like this and made out of what? Fondant. What's like that? that um your wife will know, but it's basically a marshmallow paste that it's like play doh. Okay. It's basically like edible play doh. Like that uh, you, fluff? No, it's it's like play doh texture. Okay. Like or like clay. Okay. More like clay because it dries and it's solid. Um your wife will know what um fondant is. And if you go to any bakery whenever you see some like if you see like a cake in the shape of like baby yoda that's made out of fondant okay. like the outside is made out of fondant and the inside is cake but it's so they would ask for these crazy things and i'm like well you know a cake like that costs like 300 dollars, but then you're asking me for material cost like it, yeah, it just no. like the, can, well that's someone doing it for the wrong reasons kind yes, of taking exactly. advantage of, of your nicety yeah exactly so i one, I do love that I, I have a little more flexibility in that now because I can um, I can pick uh, be selective with my customers and that people who will be grateful for the cake and then also will be um, generous enough to donate because technically people can and I hope I don't regret saying this but like people can order a cake from me and just not donate to the charity and get yeah. a free cake so it is an honor system because I don't it, I don't like withhold the cake until they pay oh yeah, yeah. Cause you're, I, I, you. I give it yeah. to them and I send them the link and I'm like it's up it's up to you to donate and I don't think I've ever had anyone not do that yeah. do that but like it is it, it's possible it, it is so it is trust based so yeah. that's why I am very word of mouth and I don't like to take on customers that I don't have some sort of connection to so it doesn't have to be someone i know personally but it has i'd like it so and so knows so and so yeah i, heard I you want someone this. else to be accountable for them to yeah. like i want to know that there's some sort of connection between me and that person well that's the community-based idea i mean that's part of this, these videos in a way it's like you know i did this because i liked what you were doing and we met at the meta baby thing and yeah. your baby was so cute and then i saw your cakes i was like you make cakes i was, like, I was confused i didn't know what it was and i looked into it a little bit I was like, do you want to do this? It'd be yeah, fun. it's it's like it is really confusing for people to understand. They're like, wait, so you make cakes, but you don't have a bakery, and then but you used to. <laughs> that, yeah, but that's you what threw me to, off. Yeah, they're like, but you used to have a bakery, but you don't have a bakery. Do you want a bakery? Yeah. Do you want more business? What's the <laughs> like? Talk- and then you have kids too. Like they're just like, I don't know what's going on. We talked. We talked for like fifteen minutes because I was trying to wrap my head around it and to understand. And they're it like, wait, so you. You charge for your cakes, but you don't take the money. 
So how, where does the money... And, and where do I pick it up? <laughs> yeah, they're like, where do I pick it up? And that's another, a whole other thing. I'm like, if you are close by, sometimes I'll drop it off because I'm like, it. sometimes it's just easier for me to do that. But yeah. if they're like in Andersonville, I'm like, you can, here's my address. You can come pick it up during yeah. these hours. There's lots of great bakeries in Andersonville. Yeah, and then, that's the other, like some... And I can tell it pretty quickly, like when people, when it's not a good fit between us, because if they're like, oh, I want this exact thing. And I'm like, I won't do this exact thing. But remember, I'm not really charging. Yeah. Like, well, I imagine if someone's charging. persnickety, you're just like, no, yeah, they, I'm good. Well, they, they just say, sometimes they'll just say no. I'm like, I don't, I won't make that exact cake. But remember, I don't get any of the proceeds. Yeah. And they're like, okay, do you know of a bakery that does make yeah. that cake? And I'm like, okay, that's respectable that you're going to like you know bow Ginkles, out and you're Lincoln, like check yeah. it out <laughs> yeah exactly i'm like there are yelp yelp is a great source yeah. for yeah. Um, heard of mandy bees it's fantastic yeah check they'll, it out. they'll probably take care of you there um so it's uh and so now i feel like i get a little bit the best of both worlds i get i feel like i actually am helping the world in some sense not just by like feeding them but also in um educating people about these like smaller organizations that have a great need and then also more concrete more directly like they're giving money to these organizations that have needs so i feel like something that i've it's almost it's like a fundraiser that yeah. i'm um so that makes me i love that i get to do that and i also love that i have the flexibility and um i can choose what projects I take on and what projects I say maybe uh, maybe next time to um, so. I imagine it gives you a great level of autonomy but also just a, a great feeling inside yeah oh, I, I mean I, I like it so so far I mean and also I do again I don't have a bit a concrete shop so I don't have to be there every day if I wanted to like take maternity leave I could just not say yes yeah. to the next um for the next three months and then there what's nice is that it's not necessarily like i have to be tuned in for a season there are birthdays all throughout the year that's the randomness of birthdays so um if i say no to one thing usually another thing comes up because someone else's birthday comes up or someone else's anniversary or whatever comes up so um i do love having that flexibility um and not having to pay for my brick and, brick and mortar so I'm I'm sure your wife is it's so nice that she has that space it's the best experiment that could have ever come along to allow her to, to, to put her toes in the water of this and see what she can do with but it but without committing exactly. to a five year without, without jumping in w- toes to, in to that yeah 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 and and then she's lucky that she has a husband that is there with his thermal backpack <laughs> so, marketing that's and been the most profitable part of doing it all it's funny enough like lululemon is giving her the springboard and the legitimacy and the mm-hmm. authority to do it but we'll be i'll be out there tomorrow at the millennium park fest slanging wraps <laughs> that's that's amazing. what is she making for so, so tomorrow she's doing uh she created this have you ever had the uh the it's like an indian chicken type dish at whole foods uh-huh. It's their best-selling item. Is it the butter? Ch- no, no, it's it's not. It has an Indian flavor, but it's more like an egg salad. An okay. Egg, or like an, okay, a, a, I see what you mean. It's got the Indian spices, yes. but it's like an egg salad. I don't know if it's even a salad if that's right, but I don't. it's delicious. It's absolutely fantastic. It's my favorite thing she makes. Mm-hmm. So we were doing bulgogi wraps to start, mm-hmm. and those were selling out great. But this is a little lighter, and I think it'll appeal to more people. Oh, yeah, because sometimes people want... People they like chicken. chicken. They like chicken. Everyone People likes like chicken. chicken. Yeah. I, I like chicken. I wouldn't necessarily. Yes. I love bulgogi, but I I would gravitate towards chicken. Yes, um, me too a lot of the time. And I think as health, Chicago is health conscious yes. in general. Um, and, and so we're doing those. And what was great about this is we both tried this. I was like, this is really good. And so she went to Whole Foods, was talking to the woman behind the counter, and she gave her the recipe. She gave her the recipe? She gave her the whole recipe. And so People she, are so generous with I, that sometimes. Yeah. I like... <laughs> People will ask me for recipes for things now, and I'm like, like even though my shop's not open, I'm like, uh, uh, <laughs> do you know? Do you understand what into this? Yeah. yeah, I'm like, I mean, I only did like months of 
research and development to come up with this recipe yes. but and you just want me to write it on the back of a napkin yep. so that you can like make it for your okay <laughs> we're, we're gonna go to dinner tonight it's all r d i mean i i that we used to do that i used to do that with my husband all the time i'm like oh yeah let's go to this bakery r d we went to um italy uh-huh ate all over R and D, and especially she, your your wife casts a wider net than mine did. We we were just we were just bakeries, and we, then mostly we hope so, yeah. I I just like to that, see the inside too. Th- that's one of her joys of doing this is every week at Lululemon it's a different menu, mm-hmm. and so we're talking to Foxtrot, Dom's, and the Ambassador Hotel right now. Dom's is like we want the same thing, no and, variety. And Dom's is like new too, yes. right? So it's. Uh, they're probably going to be the easiest to work with because they're like, this is like... They're the most... They have a process and a system. They know what they're doing. They have multiple people overseeing this. Oh, interesting. So I don't know if it's going to be the easiest, but I... And it's also not the biggest contract necessarily. Like, I hope we get them as a vendor, of course, but I don't know if that's... It probably will be the largest outlet, but I think Foxtrot would be the best. Foxtrot has multiple locations. They're not just in one spot. Oh, there's a ton of locations. And they're... um... They just got Their like forty. Is good. Yes. Like they're, uh, they just got forty three or forty six million in funding, and now they're expanding to Austin, Texas, too. I mean, the pandemic was great for them mm-hmm. because they really <laughs> it just kind of it took out all of their competitors, yes. and like real, people needed exactly what they were. They had um, the funding to stay there. Yeah. So and you, and you can go to a Fox Trot, you can get anything you want. Now, I think Fox Trot's expensive. It's it's not a place I shop a lot. But if I'm stuck in a vine, I always stop by a... It's a go-to. You can get whatever you want there, and you know it's going to be good. You know they're going to have it. I, I love going to... Fo- like, if I am if I have to, like, a dinner party or something, mm-hmm. I can just stop by Foxtrot and, like, pick up, pick up a... I can pick up a bottle of wine. I can get, like, a candle as a housewarming yep. gift. Get and the then charcuterie. I can, get whatever yeah, you need. Yeah, I can even get, like, some, like, nice little, like, uh, appetizer. 100%. I've actually gotten a lot of Foxtrot gifts like when people yeah. like say thing like because they can't pay they don't pay me so mm-hmm. they like get me a nice like fox trot like kit it's like so they're just like very thoughtful i always send fox trot as a gift like they they have these like packages that you can just send and it's just oh yeah yeah like a it comes with like wine like a face mask and like like little things like that and it's just like oh, a cute cool. little Instead of flowers, you can actually consume. I love flowers, but like you can actually consume flowers. Great it. for a week. Yeah, I, and then I like them in listings. I like, I like them for the photos, and I like them on our house too. When so, it, but I always end up with all those vases. I those. It's got to toss them. I just is like. Uh, anyways, I I that would be a great contract, and they I love that they just you know you do know that everything you buy from Foxtrot is going to be good. Yeah, like, it's gonna be a quality. The food, item. yeah, the food is always fantastic um so that that's exciting that's yeah. amazing we're really excited for it um in ambassador hotel how would they do they have like a grab and go they area have a grab and go and, and I, is she only focusing mostly focusing right now on grab and go 100 percent grab and go that's okay. it. If it if it doesn't fit that model it doesn't work okay just because it's like easy to package and um because ahead. the shelf life is roughly a week uh-huh. on all the items you can package it all somewhere else. Mm-hmm. You can have a routine with that, so she can show up on a Sunday or Monday, knock it all out, and then and put like it on the shelf. And it's like an assembly line, right? It's like an you assembly can do line process. Like that. And when it's bad, it's bad, and so you can just toss it. Uh, it has to fit within this system and this model. And you don't have to serve it immediately. That was like the issue. That's a huge like, part of it. You don't. It doesn't have to be hot or. Well, and I've tested this, so I've stopped at Lululemon, bought something every day. Mm-hmm. And it's the stuff made on Friday is just as good on uh, stuff made on Monday is just as good on a Friday. I know people are always so weird, like they're like well, when, with rules. the bakery. They're, she had to do this whole certification in order to do this, yeah. and it's like that's fine. It fits within the law, so it's it's legitimate. And I was very skeptical because I thought that way too. And still, well, we started it's just doing like this. A, um, a public like everyone wants everything to be fresh. Yes, but they don't understand that fresh doesn't have to be made twenty minutes before. People would always at like. Like, I make cakes well in advance because yeah. I don't like to be up I've, against the, like, last minute. Yeah. Like, what if something happens? Like, what if the cake collapses? Then, like, I'm... Anyways. Uh, but people are like, did you just decorate this cake 20... Like, an hour ago? And I'm like, no, I did this, like, two days ago. Yeah. But they don't like the idea that things aren't made to 
order. Where it's not necessarily, it doesn't mean it's bad. It doesn't it's, mean it's bad at all. I mean, if it's kept in a refrigerator, it's fine. Everyone's it's, eaten takeout. It, everyone's had their leftovers. And some people have done that three days after that food was cooked and it was just as good. I know. It's just, they're all, we're all guilty. It's only of because it. people think they're like, oh, it's been out like at room temperature for three days. In the world. Yes, that. That's not good if it's been out for like six hours instead of. I went like, to college. I had pizza that sat out for a few days and absolutely ate it. Was oh, fine. you kind of like turn turn a blind eye to it. Yeah. It filled your gut. Yeah. But you know, it's I I understand where people are coming from, but like the reality of it, and when you do the certification, they tell you they're like, it's actually fine yeah. for like quite some time if yeah, it's whatever the kept, days are yeah if it's if it's stored correctly and you can expand it too like you can spray vitamin e on things and there's different ways to really to, to move these things if you need to yeah i i think that people are just very closed-minded on that just like they think that you need to buy everything from the farmer's market in order for it to be like a quality produce yeah. like or a sustainable operation or from yeah. farm to table or whatever that or is or even it has to come from whole foods i'm like supermarket or like those restaurant supply places mm-hmm. they have great they have great produce out of the- i was so it was such a shame when stanley's closed down i used to love shopping oh, at stanley's. i love stanley's yeah. and it was so there'll great. never be anything like that again i i don't think there's the there's the economics just doesn't yeah. work out anymore for a place like that but that was a great place that was so sad. when we were selling wraps she made everything that morning right so mm-hmm. make a hundred wraps in the morning we're Which is exhausting, I'm sure. Exhausting. Like you were, she and probably had to wake up early, so early, do the to shopping, do, that. do everything, and then we show up somewhere. And then the at counter one, space, like uh-huh. when you, 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 I'm assuming you're doing this from your house. You're doing this at Lou Lemon. Oh, okay, you're doing this at Lou. Yeah, Lulu. or for the wraps, we were doing but them at the house. But still, like so much. Yes. Space. So we're showing up at somewhere at 1 p.m. and I'm telling you, they're like, we made this this morning. Someone's like, this morning. They're like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Yes, did I stutter? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, Only yes, one person said that, but she was like, this morning. I can hear, and then her, she's walking away with her husband. She's like, that food is bad. It's been sitting, it's been, wait, where has it I'm like, no, it's no. not. It's good. It's very good. No complaints. Well, what, what, what's the other option? Like right now, you yeah. want me to make it like. Well, I always thought it was funny when people, one thing I think, and I'm sorry for anyone that's guilty of this, but if you use Grubhub, uh, Uber Eats, DoorDash, any of those services, like you're taking money out of restaurants, Miles, oh, okay? I used sure. to use. I well, I used to like to sell out of it, right? Yeah, yes. I, I sell out of it. They take. They take everything. They take your entire I think margin. Mar- it, it, it's higher now than it used to. Well, be no, Illinois controlled I, it, so Illinois you cannot charge more than fifteen percent. Well, when and I did egregious. it, when I did it, it was twelve percent. Okay, I, and I, it was because they were just starting, starting. Um, yes. and they were I, just trying to get a bunch of restaurants. I but. met the founder of Grubhub over a decade ago when I was in school. And his entire business model, I met him at an entrepreneur's conference. His entire business model was dependent on just capturing the credit card charge, just the swipe. Uh-huh. So imagine how much money they're making now and what they like how they've expanded it. But I, I think it's I think it's terrible because all of these companies are really taking money out of the business owner's hands. So see, I'm I'm torn on that because as a business owner, like again, for you it's free marketing, right? Exactly. Yes. So for me, I'm like, these people are just like scrolling down Grubhub and they're Googling, like they're uh, typing in desserts and they're looking for a place to uh, pick up cookies. And that's how they find me. And then like I could potentially get a loyal and customer. I think it's bad when someone like that's their if, only if option. If they keep going. So if I know of a place, I'm ordering, I'm calling them. I'm going yeah. on their website and that's how I'm ordering. But maybe I'll find a place through exactly. these services. But you need, you need to get off the platform. But the problem is too, like there are some places that don't deliver, like mm-hmm. one of my favorite places to order sushi, it's all the way up in like uptown and they do provide delivery, but they don't do it all the way yes. to like Lincoln Park. Well, so, I was going to use sushi as an example. So sushi kind of irks me because what, it's sitting in some guy's Honda yeah. underneath his heater for 40 minutes while yeah. it gets to your house? Yeah. And also like in the summer, you're like, your 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 car is like this heat yes yeah yeah i i agree with that they do have i'm like do they use that thermal the bag thing i'm like hopefully they use it but yeah it does and it's just like a velcro top that goes over it like it does something like a a reflective inside i'm like okay just not gonna it's one of those things that you just like don't like you don't want to think about it um but no i agree sushi is kind of weird 
Um, but I, so I am a little torn on the, I think it's great for these like smaller, like more like places Startup I styles. That, yeah, wouldn't have known, like no one really knows about, but I think for the more, um, and then like, you know, there's like McDonald's and like Starbucks and stuff, you know, that they cut a deal yes. with, they're with getting Uber. special treatment. They're going to get better rate. Yeah. They're getting a better, they're getting a much better rate. And those are the places that don't need it. Yeah. So it's. I'm. I think it's hard. I think it's tough for those like in between businesses where there's like a loyal following, and that's the their only option is to get it from Uber Eats or. Yeah. Um, well, some places have just got rid of it altogether. It well, I think me. if it's bad, then they should just get rid of it altogether. Yes. There's no like there's no fee for canceling or anything yes. like that. So I'm like, if it really is that bad, then just get rid of it. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot, and I think for a lot of businesses they don't want to deal with like the because there it is extra insurance like your insurance does go up if you add delivery okay um because you now have to insure you're insuring this random person to go take it to some random person's house yeah so that's why um i think a lot of businesses well that's why we still did it through um Oh, because you could bypass the insurance that way? Yeah, I don't have to pay for insurance because I'm like, oh, this is this is on Uber Eats, Uber or Grubhub or whatever. Like they're insuring their drivers. But if I provide delivery, that's a whole nother aspect to my my business insurance, my liability. So and um, I have now and then on top of that, I now have to employ a A, delivery person. yeah. Yeah. Like I Who can't, wants to do like, that? If, if that doesn't make any per- sense. Yeah, cookies? Exactly. If there's one person working in my shop, I can't close down the shop because this person needs to make a delivery in the West Loop. Like, yeah. I can't. So, I think that's why, like, a lot of places just kind of deal with it. But... Um, I, I just want... Because it's... I see it with people my age a lot. And any business you start out, if you, if you have the capital to keep this going for 10 years, then that next generation just thinks it's normal. Mm-hmm. This is how it works. Like, oh, if you want food, you go on Grubhub. That's the problem. I don't want this to be the new way of just, uh, that's how I do things, right? I don't mm-hmm. think to go on the website or I don't think to call the place. And they just get intermediated out. They get pushed out. Oh, well, because I think a lot of people don't do, they're like, oh, let's check if it's on Grubhub or let's yeah. check if it's on Uber Eats. They don't actually visit the website. Yes. If they visited the website and it said we provide delivery, then you can obviously well, do. Well, and this, this hits me even closer because I look at something like Zillow. And so if you go on Zillow and you, or Redfin, oh, yes. and and you, like, if you get an agent there, just know that agent is going to make less money. They're also paying for this lead. So they act like they need the money. So now they're kind of overly hungry for what they should be getting. Mm-hmm. But you're also often going to get an inferior agent because a lot of those are built on a team structure. Are they even in Chicago? Like, do they oh, even yeah. know Chicago? Okay. Oh, oh, maybe. Exactly. All they need is a license. So let's say I'm a team leader in Chicago. I own this. I'm paying Zillow. 30 grand a month or whatever I'm paying to get leads. 30 grand a month will get you about 30 phone calls, which means maybe three of those will turn in the business. Mm -hmm. So then it trickles down and I want to have high margins, right? So I'm just going to find the agent I can pay the lowest amount to that just is like, just knows enough Chicago to show you around. Mm -hmm. And I hope those, and then it comes and turns into a numbers game. You're not getting a good agent. No. And like, yeah, I think, I think that it's it's a great platform to see yes. like for um, it's user friendly and but it is like really I, I would imagine for agents it's really frustrating to have something like that because then you're like well so people agents talk about how many how much they close and what their like what their overall production is mm-hmm. like, well, what's your bottom line like how much did you pay to do that because we've experimented with Zillow many times. And so basically to make 11,000, to make $10,000, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to have $11,000 worth of business, but 10 of it's going to go to Zillow. Oh, so it kind of depends on like what, what you're listing. Well, so right? you're, well no, so you're, you're a workhorse essentially. Uh-huh. You're paying Zillow 10 grand for leads, but it's only going to lead into 11 grand of business. So I'm netting a grand. Oh, yeah. So I just showed you places for how long and how much time did I spend on this mm-hmm. just to pay Zillow. Like mm-hmm. Zillow is the silent business partner. So if you want a good agent, what about Redfin? Is Red, Redfin's, Redfin's even worse. Okay. So now Zillow, okay. So Zillow's original model was I'm gonna, you're gonna pay me Zillow for leads. I'm gonna send you leads, and I'm not gonna be discriminatory, not like literally discriminatory, but like you're just gonna get leads. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. If you close, you should be, you should come out ahead. And Zillow be like, yeah, but you didn't make any money, but you'll get a referral from one of those. You'll get repeat business. Yeah. So like no, no, no. Redfin now Zillow does that in addition. 
they have they've created brokerages in all these different states and Zillow will now do a referral relationship. So one, one of the agents in Chicago, for instance, I like this agent, he does a ton of business, but for years, I can't imagine he made much money at all because he was just establishing himself and he has tons of production, but he's paying Zillow a ton of money for the, all the leads. Now, he works for Zillow. Mm -hmm. He's paying Zillow 30% uh, for every single lead and they're still feeding him business, but he's not paying out of pocket every month. Now they're just getting younger, they're getting other agents mm -hmm. because they just have this churn of agents mm -hmm. where they're just like, okay, come on in, we'll get this for you. Unless you're doing it over and over and you're comfortable, if you wanna make 200 grand, if you're comfortable paying 150 of that to Zillow, mm -hmm. then Zillow loves you. That's what Zillow wants. Yeah. So now that's Zillow model. Redfin does the exact same thing, but they're paying agents a low salary and most Zillow or most Redfin agents you'll meet, they're like, this is my side gig. Like, oh. oh, that's great. So real estate's your side gig. That's, that's exactly who I trust to yeah. use, right? Then they'll also use partner agents for the lower price points. So mm -hmm. for instance, we're a Redfin partner agent. I use it because I give it to agents that are just starting out so they can learn the business. This is a great way to it. Mm -hmm. But they're gonna make $1,500 off a sale. Mm -hmm. They're gonna make nothing. But you could still have to hustle. You st so, that, that's, like the, that's the point. So like, you might as well just do another job. Yeah. So if I don't want that, I don't want to be in that business, and I don't have, I don't have the endurance to work with that many people. The people that work with me get my attention. Like mm -hmm. they get a text back immediately, or mm -hmm. an hour later. Like I'm gonna end this. And my phone's gonna, my phone's off, and I'm just gonna, be, I'm gonna go back to it. I'm gonna be getting back to people yeah. the whole time. That all my focus is on them. Mm -hmm. You can't do that with that many people, and I couldn't do that if I'm paying no, seventy percent of everything. No, you have like seventy clients, and you're yeah. like, no. con like so when you see these agents, they're like, looking? I closed two mil two hundred million dollars a year. You're like, but how many did you actually? How? Make? Yeah. Like, and how many or how many people do you have? Otherwise, yeah, I'm like, are you just selling like, like, fifty million dollar yes, homes? Like yes. every yeah, it's like. Or they'll have a team of like thirty people beneath them, mm -hmm. and so you're like, okay, so really you're a team of like. 30 people and each of you do about 5 million. Yeah. And you're representing as if all of you do it and it's just a big fraud. You guys are just all, all yes. like one team. Yeah, you should be really scared. It's like that's like selling Sunset, right? Like I don't where know. they have the Oh, you don't I don't watch. It. You probably That's no. how I am about like no. some baking that's not shows. Real. Everyone's like It's not real. Do you ever watch the Great British Baking Show and I'm like I just can't. Yeah. Like I, I don't know like I used to love it but now or I used to love shows like that but now sometimes I just can't. Well, like, well everyone thinks a real estate agents like a, a Phil Dunphy from Modern Family yeah. or they think they're Ryan Serhan. Yeah, well, or like, and they're trying to put me in a box. So like, which one are you? I'm like, yeah. I, I I don't watch those shows. I don't know what box you're trying to fit me in or try. Like, I don't. I can well, tell I, the I people can tell that you do it. Not, neither. Yes. Yeah. Well, they have this skewed perception of how real estate works, and they think it's going to work that way. I'm like, you watch the 30 minute show where they, the person already bought the house, by the way, and then they went back and went through all these properties because we've been. I've I've had oh, the opportunity like the, to go on those. I have no interest. Like house hunters, HG. all those shows. All that stuff's fabricated, HGTV it's all ones, fake. They're yeah. like, okay, I'm a, like they have like a couple and they're like, I'm I'm a blogger and then yeah. I'm like a- They already closed, they already time. bought the house. Yeah, and, but then they also have like realistic expectations on like what you can get for like X amount. And I'm like, these are like- What's fabricated? They're yeah, like, this is totally what we want. We, we want you to it's have this you problem. Got, when you renovate a place, they're like, you can build a new kitchen two, two, for like two seven weeks, grand. Two, and I'm like, two weeks and 30 grand. You're like, no, 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 that's impossible. Yes. And they're like, every, you have to get permits for things. Let's start there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and then like they, they have like a dedicated show team, yes. which is like heavily staffed. Yes, and yes. then also they're getting sponsorships and like yeah. everything's like at cost. Like they don't, there's no markup. Yeah. I know when we renovated, we, um, I watched a ton of those shows beforehand. So I was like, oh, so this is how much it costs to like got renovate um, my city condo. And it'll, it should take, okay, this place it took like three weeks. So let's just say six weeks because you always double every, you know, like I just didn't think that. And in reality, it was like triple the budget. And you it took six months. To, yeah, it took, yeah, for us it took eight months most of it wasn't the actual work yep. it was the waiting and in designing and designing I thought that the designing would just I'm like oh in the shows they just did it in like 20 minutes I think let's like, blow out that wall 
It's everything's blow out a wall and open concept. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, they'll invite me to do the demo. Like I, I get to like put on a hat and like do the demo and like knock it down too. No, like it's. When, whenever someone is interviewed to work with me, whenever they say I watch HGTV and I think I'll be good at that, which is literally about half the people, the interview is going to end within five minutes of that statement, just on the appropriate time I can do it to not be rude. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, well, how do I like gracefully? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like they don't. Or, or like even like the house hunting ones, they're like, I'm a blogger and I'm like, oh, like I'm starting a new business and like. And my it, budget's two million dollars. Yeah, my budget, my budget's like a million and a half. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Do your parents have money? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I think that's usually the answer. Yeah, usually, but they don't say that in the show. Yes. So you're like. You're like, got it. And that's okay. That's fine. If, that, if that's what you're doing, that's perfect. But it's fine. just like so misleading to these people. But then, so well, it's anyways, creating there, a generation this... of buyers that are unreasonable to work with. Let me, let me just put oh, it that Oh, I way. believe that. Well, I think, I'm, I'm sure we're, we're one of those. But um, I watch um, Selling Sunset, not ju- just because it's entertaining. Yeah. Um, and there are these like agents that are, you know, 20, 28, 20, like very young. Yeah. And they're selling all of their ho- listings. All of their listings are like $5 million homes, $7 million yeah. homes. And then, you know, they always do like a, again, you probably don't because you don't watch these shows, but they're like brokers, brokers, uh, brokers fee. Like uh-huh. They always do like a little brokers fee at the bottom. So it's like yeah, 100, 300 000. grand commission. Yeah. You're like, wow. They got, but they, then, but then they don't factor in any of the stuff that you were just talking about Mm -hmm. and then of course there's the marketing cost i imagine it costs a pretty penny to print those very nice pamphlets and like all and then they all these selling sunset in particular they all work for brokerage so they brokerage takes their piece oh yeah yeah and i'm sure it's a pretty penny it's a significant chunk yeah and the the shame of it is you know if we're selling a two hundred fifty thousand dollar home or we're selling a million dollar home the marketing is actually about the same Oh, absolutely. For, for us, not for most agents, but for us, like we're doing video, we're doing 3D floor plans, we're doing the best photos, we're doing nice brochure, we're doing it all. Well, for I'm this sure property. it's about the same. Yeah. I mean, I would think that maybe like the buyer pool is narrower for like a million dollar home versus a $250 oh, yeah. million dollar home. So but, maybe you But the have marketing to do has to be on much. par. Because the marketing, I, I want someone, when someone comes and actually looks at the property, mm-hmm. I want them to already know it. Well, no matter They've what. already walked through it. They've seen it. They're confident. They're basically here just to make sure it's really what it's supposed to be. Well, no matter what, a picture's a picture, right? Like, if you... Oh, no, I disagree with that. Well, a picture is not a picture. Well, I'm a saying, like... A picture could be, like, five different ways, right? But I'm saying, like, for a two... Like, a quarter of a million dollar home versus, like, a million yes. dollar home. Yes. Like, it's going to cost you the same amount to go in for photography for that home. Yes. Versus that home. Sure, maybe, like... It's, it's going to take a little bit more time because there's like more photos. Bigger, yeah. yeah, and then like there are more ang- angles you can go at and like there are more things you want to photograph. But still, a showing is still a showing. Yes. Like, it's still going to be a half hour showing for the quarter. Like, it doesn't take less the, time. It took more you, time to get there than I'm going to spend there. A lot of the time. I, be, I, complete, I believe that. Yeah. Like, and I think, so that makes total sense to me. Why Also, why people are always wanting the higher <laughs> Um, it's because I would think that would be so hard to sell a bunch of smaller units because that's also more like like a two dollar it's like a two dollar cookie versus like a fifty dollar cake right like you have to like hustle more to like I have to do just as much marketing for like a cookie as I did for a cake but it's just like a bigger a bigger thing yeah so I believe that Thanks so much for doing this. Of course. We, we, we're, we're way off topic, and I know you got places to be and stuff. I mean, we, I don't know. <laughs> what did we not cover? <laughs> did we even talk about the thing that you wanted to talk about? <laughs> I don't even know. So <laughs> Probably if, not. If people want to get your cakes and they want to donate to a good cause, how can they find you? They can find me on my Instagram, and they can just message me through there, or they What's can. What's your Instagram? Um, Isabel by the Park. Isabel with one L. Isabel by the Park on Instagram. Yeah. And they can DM you there or go through they the can, link? Yeah, they can DM me there or they can um, click the email button there and email me. But that's the best way. Perfect. Or hopefully they know, maybe they know someone who <laughs> has gotten a cake from me. That's the best way. Good. Thanks so much for doing this, Isabel. Thank you so much for Appreciate speaking it. with me. Absolutely.